Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about axis control list operations. And there's a few things about the way that ACLs work that are not that intuitive. So this is an important lecture to pay attention to because you really need to understand these things so that you understand how ACLs really work. If you don't understand them, it's gonna lead to really confusing things happening and it's gonna make it really difficult for you to troubleshoot those things as well. So important lecture. Okay, starting off with how we apply our ACLs. ACLs are applied at the interface level with the axis group command. So you saw in the previous lectures about how we build our ACLs. We build them with our axis control entries, which are the rules which permit or deny the particular traffic. But that just creates the ACL. You still have to apply it to make it come into effect. And the way you do that is at the interface level with the axis group command. When you are configuring ACLs, don't forget to apply them with the axis group command. It's actually quite easy to do that. Okay, ACLs can be applied in the inbound or the outbound direction. And you can have a maximum of one ACL per interface per direction. You can have both an inbound and an outbound ACL on the same interface, but you can't have two inbound or two outbound ACLs on the same interface. And if you think about it, this actually makes sense because we've got our access control lists were made up of entries. If we had two different ACLs with different entries and we applied them to the same interface coming in in the same direction, how would the router know which rule to apply if there was conflicting rules in there? You don't need to have more than one ACL applied to an interface because you can have multiple rules in the same ACL. If you did have multiple ones, there could be conflicts, the router wouldn't know what to do. So that's why we always have a maximum of one ACL per interface per direction. Your options are on an interface, you can have no ACL applied, or you could have an inbound ACL only, or you could have an outbound ACL only, or ACLs in both directions. So let's talk about this a little bit more as well. And people can get confused about the ACL direction, but there's a really easy way to not get confused about it. And that is to be like Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid and be the router. So if you've got an ACL, let's say we've got a router and on this arm, I have got interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. And on this arm, I've got interface fast ethernet fast one slash zero. And you want to control traffic going from a client out this arm, going to a server out this arm. Well, you could either, there's two ways you could apply the ACL. You could apply it inbound on this arm because when you be the router, I know it looks silly. You don't have to actually physically do it. Just do it in your head if you want. But like stick your arms out to the side and say, this is this interface. This is that interface. And I'm interested in controlling traffic going from the hosts over here to the servers over there. Well, in that case, I can apply the ACL inbound as it comes in this interface, or I can apply it outbound as it goes out that interface. So whether it's inbound or outbound, it depends on the direction of the travel. If travel is going from here over to here, I can put it inbound here, or I can put it outbound there. And it's only going to affect the traffic which is in one direction. Okay, so, You'll see what I mean first time you run into this. Anytime you're thinking, oh, should it be in the inbound or the outbound direction? Or what is this going to do? If you're confused about the direction, just imagine you're the router, your arms are the interfaces, stand like that, think about the, the direction that travel's going in, and then it's going to be really easy to understand what's going on. 
Okay, how to actually configure our Access Group configuration. So it's done under the interface. Here, for example, we've got interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one. I can say IP Access Group 100 out, IP Access Group 101 in. And then to check which access groups or which access lists are applied to which interfaces, it's actually easiest just to do a show running config to see this. There's not a really good show command for this. The specific show command you can use is show IP interface and then the interface number. But when you do that, you're going to get a lot of very verbose output. So if you want to just see the access list information, you can pipe it to include access list. Notice it show IP interface, not show interface. But again, to be honest, rather than typing in that big long command, it's easier just to do a show run, scroll down to the interfaces, and you can see what ACLs are applied there. If an interface does not have an ACL applied in a particular direction, it would say not set. For example, outgoing access list is not set. Next thing, super important, the ACL is read by the router from top to bottom. As soon as a rule matches on the packet, the permit or deny action is applied and the ACL is not processed any further for that packet. So this means that the order of rules is important. And I've got an example that's going to make it really clear. So our first ACL here, We've said access list one deny host 10.10.10.10. And then the next line is access list one permit 10.10.10.0.0.0.255. So what this will do is it will deny the host 10.10.10.10, but it will permit the rest of the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnets. So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to block just one host, but allow everything else in the subnet. Now, the second example is going to use exactly the same commands, but I've flipped the order around. So the second example, I've said access one permit 10.10.10.0.0.0.255. So permitting everything from the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnet. Then access list one deny host 10.10.10.10. Well, what will happen here is it will permit all from the 10.10.10.0 slash subnet, including 10.10.10.10. Because when a packet comes in from 10.10.10.10, the router will start processing the ACL and 10.10.10.10 is in the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnet. So it will match the first rule and the traffic will be allowed through. It never gets to the second rule, which would deny it because it's read from the top down, and as soon as we get a match, that action is applied. So the second access control list example here is wrong. It's not doing what we wanted to do. We would need to do it the first way. So the order of your access control entries is important. You want to put the most specific entries up at the top of the list, the less specific down nearer the bottom. Another thing is we can inject access control entries into an existing ACL. When you create the ACL, the router will automatically put access control entries on all of your different ACEs and it numbers them in increments of 10. So when you enter, when you put the first command in, it numbers at 10. When you put in the second one, it numbers at 20 and so on. So it puts the numbers in for you. You don't have to do this. So you can see the example here, we've got an ACL access list 110 and we've got four entries in there which are numbered 10, 20, 30 and 40. The reason for this is it allows you to later on inject a rule, whatever you want to, into an existing ACL. So for example here, before what we had was rule 10 was deny TCP host 10.10.10.10 to host 10.10.50.10 equals telnet. Ignore line 15 for now because that's what we're going to do in a minute. And then 20 is permit 10.10.10.0.0.0.255. So here we're denying host 10.10.10.10. We're permitting everything else in the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network. 
well, maybe you'd already configured this ACL, and then later, you don't want to just deny 10.10.10.10, you want to deny 10.10.10.11 as well. Well, if you just added a new line for 10.10.10.11, that would go in below the line which permits everything in the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnet, and it wouldn't work. So we need to inject that line higher up than our line 20 permit statement. So the way we do that is here we're using a named ACL. We've got IP access list extended 110, and we say 15 deny TCP host 10.10.10.11 to host 10.10.50.10 equals telnet. That will put it higher up in the ACL than rule 20, so we've got our rules working in the correct order. Support for injecting ACEs into an existing ACL, that first came out with named ACLs, but you can do it with numbered ACLs as well now. But the syntax is done the same way that you do it for a named ACL. Here you can see me doing it actually to numbered. I've said IP access list extended 110. 110 was my numbered ACL. I need to use a syntax like this to allow me to inject commands in. Okay, so that's injecting ACEs into an existing ACL. Next thing, super important again. There's an implicit deny any any rule at the bottom of all ACLs. So if an ACL is not applied to an interface, well, all traffic is allowed. You knew that already. If an ACL is applied, all traffic is denied except what is explicitly allowed because of that implicit deny any any rule. It's implicit because you don't have to type it in. It's always there. So if we created an access list, here we've said access list 1 permit 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 0.0.255. .0 .0 .0 below there there is a deny all command which is always there so traffic from 10.10.10.0 slash 24 will be permitted everything else is denied because of the implicit deny all at the bottom of your acl some organizations well many organizations include an explicit deny all at the end of acls to log illegal traffic so they actually type in like you see here, access list one, deny any log. So if you're wondering, well, why would they put that in when it denies anyway? It's so that you can log it, so you can send information out to an external server. So if somebody is doing something they're not meant to be doing, sending traffic that they shouldn't be, then you're blocking it, but you're also going to get a report about that as well. Okay, so with the explicit deny all, it means that... And when an ACL is applied, all traffic is denied except what is explicitly allowed in the access control entries that you configure. If you want to reverse that so that all traffic is permitted except what is explicitly denied, the way you do it is you add a permit all statement to the end of the ACL. That will then be higher up than the implicit deny any, which is still there. So here we've said access list one deny 10.10.10.0, 0.0.0.255, and then access list one permit any. So we'll deny what we said in the first line. Everything that we haven't explicitly denied is going to be permitted. Another thing, and this is one that can confuse you, is that ACLs applied to an interface do not apply to traffic which originates from that router itself. So you see in the example here, we've got routers R1 and R2, and we want to block telnet traffic going from the hosts on the left, going to the R2 router. And we've done that with an access control list on R1. So we said access list 100 deny TCP from any going to any equals 23. And then because we're doing it on interface R1, well, we could actually do it inbound on interface fast 0 slash 0, or we could do it outbound on interface fast 1 slash 0. Hopefully you see what I mean now about the holding your arms out thing, and you'll be able to figure out the direction. Traffic here is going from left to right. So if we want to control that, we could control it either with an inbound ACL on 0, 0, or an outbound ACL on 1 slash 0. Okay, so we, we've done that, and this ACL will work. It will stop the host on the left from telnetting to R2. However, 
If we go onto the command line on R1, we will be able to tell net to R2. You may well wait, that shouldn't work because I've done my ACL outbound on interface fast one slash zero and R1, and the traffic is going to go out that interface. The reason it will work is the ACLs do not apply to traffic that comes from the router itself. So if we wanted to block tra telnet traffic from the PCs and from R1 as well, don't do the ACL on R1, do the ACL inbound on R2. Okay, so that is everything about how to configure and understand and verify our ACLs. In the next lecture, I'll show you how to do it with a lab demo. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.